Have you ever found yourself lacking the motivation to get things done? No worries, I've been there too. I've actually been there recently. So today I'm going to share what contributed to my lack of motivation, as well as the five step process that I went through to help me start to get my mojo back. Welcome to the Mind Your Time podcast. I'm Shannon Baker, your host and coffee aficionado. Whether your goal is to increase your side gig income or scale to six figures, you're in the right place. You will learn about the tools, actionable strategies, and tactics you can use to take back control of your time and life. I specialize in helping purpose-driven women like yourself work smarter and tap into the growth potential their business holds. So if you're ready to make a bigger impact and achieve business growth without being tied to it 24 seven, then stick around. Let's dive into today's topic. Let's keep it real. I know that getting back into the flow of things after the summer break can be a little bit of a struggle. Those summer vibes, having the freedom to spend more time out of the office in the warmer weather, It can really make it hard to be motivated to get back into the office and get things done. And especially this time of the year, it can be a real challenge. Q3 is basically over and in Q4, we need to be prepping for Q1. I talked about this a little bit in last week's episode because there is still time for you to get things together and end the year strong. Now, personally, I basically just wrapped up what I refer to as my Q4 because I start my year in October, which I've even adjusted that because I used to restart my year in September. But I found that at the end of the summer, I'm ready to start focusing on what I need to do the rest of the year So that come January 1st, which is Q2 in my books, I can hit the ground running. But that is a story for a whole nother episode. So let's get back to you. Summer is ending and fall is right around the corner. Plus you're adjusting to a new schedule, especially if you have kids that are in school or kids kids that went away to college. And if you really enjoyed stepping away for a bit this summer, then mentally and otherwise, you're probably pretty resistant about getting back into the daily grind. And that's okay. Our lives have so many moving parts. Our routines get disrupted. And then we find ourselves feeling out of sorts, so to speak. So I decided to record this episode because I have not been sticking to my routines. And because of that, I haven't been feeling very motivated. Now, if you've been listening to this podcast for a while or whether you're new to the podcast or not, I'm a huge believer in practicing self-care every day. And I talk about it all the time. And that comes from what I've experienced personally. And I actually did an entire episode talking about the power of self-care because it's really important that we care for ourselves, that we pour into ourselves. As they say, you can't pour from an empty cup. And in that episode, I shared some tips that I hope will help you make self-care every day a priority. I'm going to put a link to that in the show notes. And I'm sharing that because I figure if I'm struggling with this, then you might be too. So let's not shy away from this topic. So let me get into what has been going on in my life. Well, starting in July, my daughter had a summer job. At the time, my husband was working from home and he would pick her up the two days a week he was working from home. And I took her in the morning, which broke up my my normal morning routine, which is rise by 730, make my cup of coffee, spend time in prayer, do some Bible reading and meditate all while it's quiet. But that it wasn't happening. And basically, this had a domino effect. So not only did my schedule shift when it comes to my morning routine, but my entire day had to shift, which also meant I wasn't able to take my normal walking breaks, which I usually do 
two 10 to 15 minute walks every day just to get out, get some air, get some sun. Now, while these two simple things sound simple, these changes had a huge impact. Those two things are simple daily self-care practices that I have gotten used to and they're vital for my mental, physical, emotional, and most importantly, my spiritual health. So when all was said and done, thinking life will return to normal because her summer job ended, my mom had a surgical procedure done. So I had planned for about two weeks of time taking care of her and my dad because she's his caregiver, but Murphy's Law kicked in and things did not go exactly as planned. There was an unexpected complication and it required me to basically put everything on hold to give her my full attention. So after three weeks of dealing with that, while I'm happy to say she's on the men, my schedule really is permanently changed and I'm at my parents' house basically every other day to assist my mom with taking care of my dad. Plus, I still work a day job, care for my family, I participate in my ministry, so I've still got all the regular things on my plate. Now honestly, the problem is motivation depends on your desire at any point in time. And if you're relying on motivation to get you through and make you do all the things, whether it's exercise, eating right, cleaning your house, creating content, doing client work, all those things we have to do, eventually the motivation is gonna fail you because you're gonna wake up one day like I did and say, you know what? I don't feel like getting up at seven today. I'm gonna just sleep in. I'm going to skip my morning routine. That's fine, right? Because when you think about it, you do have an excuse, but then the next day you do the same thing. And then you realize days turn to weeks, weeks turn to months, and it can go on for a very long time. And in those moments when we get out of sorts, we start to lose energy, we feel deflated, we question our direction, we question our worthiness, and we lose our motivation. Then we feel guilty because we can't seem to snap out of this funk. Now, don't get me wrong. Sometimes we just feel a little lazy or want to binge watch our favorite series, whether it's Hulu, Amazon, or something else. But that's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about the moment when you don't even want to do the things that you enjoy doing or the things that are really valuable to you, like spending time with your family, getting in your workout or working on your business. Those are the days when the motivation isn't there. You just can't focus. So in all honesty, motivation comes and goes is a fact of life. So what I've learned over the years is you have to learn how to commit to achieving your goals, sometimes whether you're feeling motivated or not. And the good news is the lack of motivation, it's a temporary move that will pass. So being transparent, I have talked about this on the podcast before because I've been here before. I'm only human. But today, I'm going to share the process that I use to get back on track when I feel like I've lost my mojo, my motivation. So take out your pen and paper and write down these five steps. The first thing I do is write out what I don't feel like doing right now and make sure you be specific when you do this. Like for me right now, I don't want to get in my workouts. I don't want to sweep and mop the wood floors that we have. And I don't want to straighten out my closet because it's a mess and I'm tired of how it looks when I go in there. But I don't feel like cleaning it up. The second thing you need to do is list two to three reasons why you don't want to do it. Okay, so for me, I don't want to work out. Well, I haven't done it for a while. So I don't feel like doing it now. When it comes to sweeping the mop in the floors, because I'm tired, I just keep hoping in the back of my mind that my husband's going to do it. 
then going back and forth to my parents' house and helping with both of them, it has been a lot. So really, the floor is not a priority in the scheme of things. And uh, about that closet of mine, well, I know that there are more clothes in there than I need. And honestly, I can't fit a lot of them, which is giving me that motivation that I need to start working out again. So for now, I'm just going to live with the chaos of my closet. So there are my reasons. Now, the third thing you want to do is look at your reasons. Ask yourself if you're really being honest and if those really are the reasons. Don't skip this step. Then the fourth thing you want to do is write out at least one thing that you can do to get motivated, whether it's get a manicure, have a black coffee conversation with yourself like I had to do, or even find a new activity that lights you up. So I sat down and had a black coffee conversation with myself and I picked the closet, i.e. the clothes and the chaos. So I made a commitment to myself to get in at least 15 to 20 minutes of exercise every day for the rest of this month. And it's September. When this episode goes live, it will be September 14th. So that basically gives me about two weeks to be consistent with getting in 15 to 20 minutes of exercise every day. And then I'll reevaluate and hopefully be able to increase that. But that is the one thing that I'm going to do to get myself motivated. And I've already started. And I must say, I feel better already. So the fifth thing you want to do is schedule time in your calendar to do that one thing that is going to help you get motivated and then do the thing. And then just rinse and repeat these steps as needed. Because remember, motivation comes and goes. But being committed to your goals, that is the game changer. Now, when you're feeling out of sorts, make sure you surround yourself with positive, like-minded women that understand your journey will provide support, motivation, and encouragement. But also make sure you don't attach yourself to people who are judgmental. Most importantly, protect Your dreams. Do not share your dreams with people who are critical and negative. Seek out people that are going to cheer you on and help you get motivated and get going. That's the type of community that I want us to build together. So if you're interested, please feel free to connect with me on Instagram at the underscore Shannon Baker. I want to be a part of your journey and would love to have you in mind. We need to support each other encourage each other, show empathy for each other, because this journey, it's hard. But I hope that this episode has helped you, even in a small way, find something that can help you restore your motivation or at least start to rekindle it a little bit. And if you need this, don't need this right now, but you might need it in the future. Hold on to it. It will be here so you can come back to it. So before I wrap up, I'm going to do a recap of the five steps. And this time, I'm not going to talk about me. I'm going to give them to you straight in a row. The first thing you want to do is write out what you don't feel like doing. Second, you're going to list three reasons why you don't want to do it. Third, look at those reasons and ask yourself if you're really being honest about why you don't want to do the thing. And don't skip this step. Then fourth. You're going to write out at least one thing that you can do to get motivated again. Pick something that's going to make you happy, even if you have to sit down like I did and have a stern conversation with yourself. And then fifth, schedule time in your calendar to do that one thing that's going to help you move forward and restore your motivation. Then again, rinse and repeat these steps as needed. Think of this season as prep time for your spotlight moment. Plant seeds of success, but don't forget to check in with yourself. And if you need to, hit the pause button on life and take a step back. This whole, the whole goal of this is for you to find a better work-life integration so you can stay motivated and achieve your goals 
even if you have to take small steps to make it happen. Small steps matter. If you're struggling to maintain consistency in your business because you need to get systems in place, then I can help you fix that. Reach out to me, book a free discovery call. We can talk about how I can help you fill in the gaps in your back office so that you can get that off your plate and focus on achieving your goals. And if this episode really resonates with you and you're feeling ready to get your motivation back and supercharge your business, we can talk about that on a discovery call too. Or you can feel free to hit me up in the DMs. I would love to hear from you. Remember, just consuming the content of this episode or any of the other episodes of this podcast is not enough. You have to take the first step. And sometimes that can be hard, but it's definitely worth it. And I cannot wait to connect with you and support you on your journey. So again, feel free to connect with me on Instagram at the underscore Shannon Baker. I want to thank you for joining me this week. If you have any questions, please feel free to reach out to me and get them answered. And if this episode was valuable to you and you know someone else that may, you know, this will help them get their motivation back, please feel free to share it. You can share it with them directly or you can take a screenshot, post it in Instagram stories and tag me at the underscore Shannon Baker. And I have a favor to ask before I let you go. Please leave me a rating and a review because social proof matters. And I want to help, I want to reach as many female entrepreneurs like yourself as I can. So please go to ratethispodcast.com forward slash mind your time and leave me a rating and a review. Well, that's it. I look forward to having you join me back here next week for another interesting topic. And until then, keep calm and streamlined.